Hello again. I want to talk about chapter 8 of Birth and Death of the Sun. So the first section, the end of stellar evolution, really getting to the, the death part of our sun. For all stars, gravity is going to win. Gravitational collapse is inevitable for all stars. Our sun, actually most stars, will leave behind a rather exotic form of matter. So our sun is going to really leave behind its core. Its outer layers will be expelled into space, and that's what I mentioned in the previous video when discussing planetary nebula. The collapse of matter section. Most matter, every all matter that we know, the matter that makes us the matter we encounter every day, has its properties because of the repulsions of electrons. So why we why objects feel solid is because of the outer layers of electrons and that thing you're touching, repelling the outer layers of electrons in you. At high enough pressures, you will overcome that repulsion. And so what happens is you can start crunching atoms and and making them take smaller spaces in a strange way. And the electrons themselves that are part of these atoms, they will all become delocalized. So they will belong to every atom in the collection of atoms. It's kind of like how metals behave. Um, for most metals, what defines a metal is that the valence electrons are delocalized for the state of our sun's core in the distant future. It'll have a whole bunch of carbon and oxygen nuclei and the electrons that will balance out all those protons in those nuclei will just belong to all of those nuclei. There's a section on how large the largest stone can be. So a solid object can only be so massive before gravity really takes in. So Jupiter as a largest stone, uh, an object as massive and as large as Jupiter is the limit for a quote cold object, one that doesn't undergo fusion to exist as what we call normal or the uncrushed matter where electron repulsion is maintained. There is a happy relationship for stable isotopes. Most stable isotopes have a A to Z or mass number to atomic number ratio of about two. What that also means is the neutron to proton ratio for most stable isotopes is about 1.5 to one. So you need about 50% more neutrons than you have protons to make a stable isotope. Though when you look at any possible isotopes for a particular element that you will find that the exact numbers will deviate. But there is a, a general stable amount. Um, what's going to happen when our sun gets to its white dwarf stage is all the hydrogen is going to be gone. There will be, again, carbon and maybe some oxygen um, as a result of the hydrogen that fused to helium and then the helium that fused into carbon. And that's what will be left over but it'll be this chunk that'll have the radius of the Earth, but it'll have most of the mass of the sun still in there. By most, I say maybe 50% or a little bit more. Average density will be about 3 million times that of water. So that's denser actually than any solid object here on Earth, but it still isn't considered a solid. So what we call this is a white dwarf, and we do have observational evidence for white dwarf stars. They have a white color and low luminosity, which means they are probably small. Again, considering the Stefan Boltzmann relationship, luminosity of a star is proportional to the radius squared times temperature to the fourth. If the temperatures for white dwarfs are rather high, they are maybe 10,000 Kelvin, then the radius has to be rather small to make a low luminosity. So interesting, if our sun were a white dwarf, it would appear about the same size as Venus in the sky as Venus appears to us now, but it would still be 10,000 times brighter than the, than the full moon. That's still dimmer than the sun, but it would be this blazing single point of light. And again, that is the, that's what the future holds for our sun. 